No Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Yamaha revs your heart, and by FXR Racing World Class Outerwear. It was only a little over five years ago that Polaris stood the snowmobile industry on its ear with the introduction of the most radical snowmobile suspension design in the past decade. The ProRide external shock rear suspension setup did what no other shock in-skid system could do. It provided a truly 100% rising rate. This year, Polaris has pushed the envelope further. The result is the Axis. It comes in two flavors that are calibrated to be equal in performance, but different in experience. The Pro S is for the guys who spend most of their time on the trail, and the Pro X is for guys who spend a lot of time in ditches or on ungroomed terrain. Both are available in rush or switchback lengths. Don't be fooled into thinking this is just your average Pro ride with new plastic. The Axis is a 100% new design utilizing 93% new parts keeping in mind three fundamental goals. Well, the history of Axis is really cool. You know, we are always out there trying to improve stuff. And actually, the, the, the birth of it was really right after we launched ProRide. And we started to think about all the things that we learned and some of the things we might want to improve for the future. And we started talking about really the three attributes that matter the most to customers, which is control, performance, and comfort. And we, so we started thinking about these things kind of one at a time. And if you think about control first, we brought what we call rider balance control. So we have this great weight transfer that gives us you know, tremendous performance through the, through the bumps and great acceleration, but we have a front end that can be really planted when you want it to be. What we did with the new Axis platform is we changed the ergonomics so that in most of the areas where the rider connects to the vehicle, like the seat and the knees and the handlebars, we move that roughly five inches forward. So what that does is it puts the rider in the center of the vehicle where you want to be. So there's no more trying to fight to get forward as you're going through the corner. You're able to just sit on it and get it to corner very well. But then once you're, if you're in a situation where you want the skis to come up, then you just need to lean back a little bit and you're going to be able to get those skis to lift off the snow. With a sled that's been 100% redesigned, it's impossible to cover every new feature. But one area of the Axis that does need some special attention is its all new 800 Clean Fire HO motor. What we've done with the motor is we've integrated it into the chassis. We've changed it so there's no longer engine straps that go under the crankcase. We put the mounts into the crankcase and what that allowed us to do is lower the motor and move it forward slightly and we also tipped it so that we could get a more direct air flow through the motor so the intake track is more direct and also the exhaust is straighter coming out. The motor itself has a few key changes to it. They are uh, electronic exhaust valves, that's the big thing, three position electronic exhaust valves for performance. It also improves the fuel mileage and the running quality. The other thing we did is put a lightweight crankshaft in it that's two and a half pounds lighter. That allows the motor to rev up quicker, also in helping the performance. And then the other thing is an electronic oil pump, and that gives you a lighter feel on the throttle, and then it just allows you to always give the right amount of oil to the engine. You're gonna see with this motor a huge improvement in performance. It's has more horsepower, it's stronger running, and it's also quicker revving. It's just good, solid performance throughout the power van. There's no question this new 800 HO motor is impressive. It's the fastest revving 800 motor I've ever ridden. It's smooth as butter, but it pulls like a Cummins diesel. If ultimate performance was the mission, mission accomplished. Of course, there's a long list of other interesting changes you're gonna notice right away. An aluminum crank connects the rear arm to the shock and saves more than 13 pounds versus the old steel unit. Finally, a new left-hand switch cluster replaces the decades-old version we've been complaining about. New running boards are wider and longer. A new gauge option offers not only full color display, but also fully integrated GPS mapping and Bluetooth. A remarkable LED headlight is not only lighter in weight, but also significantly brighter than a standard light. The gauge is definitely the coolest piece of gadgetry I've ever seen on a snowmobile, and it works exactly the way it's intended to. But there's a lot more to this snowmobile. 
things you may not notice when looking from the outside in. Well, there really are an amazing number of things with, with Axis that really aren't gonna be evident unless you're looking for them. And I think probably a lot of, a lot of it starts with the things we did to take weight out. So things like a carbon fiber overstructure, you're gonna to wanna to take the side panels off and show your buddies, but if you didn't know it was there, you'd never see that from the outside. Or the way that the plastic strips off. All of the plastic in this sled can be stripped off in about 30 seconds with no tools, and that's incredibly helpful for serviceability if you wanna get in and, and do something with the sled, or even just clean it to be able to get in there. So that's, that's phenomenal. There is a new intake material that we're using that we borrowed from the automotive industry that's lighter weight and it's, it has improved sound characteristics. Uh, something, again, that you would never notice from the outside. There's simply not enough time to cover all the new features and changes of the Axis Pro X and Pro S models or to fully discuss how impressive it handles, rides and performs. The best we can do is tell you that it delivers on every promise Polaris made about it and it weighs 35 pounds less than its predecessor, making it the lightest 800 in its class. Stay tuned to Snow Tracks for more info. We promise it'll be worth the wait, no pun intended. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Quebec Original, where the snowmobile calls home. Each season at a special location, we have the opportunity to find out what's new for next season. We don't have the opportunity to ride snowmobiles at this event, but we can ask the manufacturers a whole lot of questions. So here's what you need to know about 2015. Yes, no, model year 2015 is a big year for Yamaha in the mountains. Our dealers have been waiting for this new product. The sleds are awesome. We've got them in two different track lengths. We've got the power, the performance that we need to be competitive in the mountains. And it's going to bring the, the customers back into our dealerships and give us something very competitive in that mountain market. The one thing that will distinguish Yamaha mountain sleds from the rest of the market is the use of our four-stroke engines. What our dealers and customers are looking for is a lightweight four-stroke snowmobile that can handle as well, has the agility, the maneuverability of any of the current run of two-stroke snowmobiles, and that's exactly what we're bringing to the market. Well, some of the confidence uh, coming into the mountain release of this many new models in one season comes from the fact that we didn't rush it. We took the extra season. We would have loved to have some of this available last year, but quite frankly, we weren't ready, and we've taken that extra time to develop all the different variations that we have. We also know that depending where you ride and the conditions you ride in, whether you're a, a backcountry rider or someone trying to build up for first ascents and breaking up some of the, the, the steeper slopes, you may want a different track configuration, you want a different shock package, different setup of the machine, and we've made sure that we've got something for everyone in our new mountain lineup. So the, the actual term crossover means a lot of different things to a lot of different riders. When you really look into it, I, I think you have to understand where the machine's being ridden, how it's being ridden, um, what the level skill set of the actual operator is, but it's a term that I think is getting somewhat overused. It covers a lot of different areas of the snowmobile business. Okay, well, we've expanded our lineup of crossover snowmobiles this year. Last year we had the 1.7 inch track lugged 144 inch XTX. This year we've added a limited edition model which is closer to a mountain machine, which will be more suitable for more off-trail deep snow riding. It's got a two and a quarter inch track based on the same length, but it still retains the ski width of a trail sled. And on the other end of the scale, we've got an all new model with the STX. That machine has a 1.3 inch track height, plus it's got the ability to add a two up seat and other storage features. And it comes with the coil spring shock absorbers, the heated seat and the bigger windshield, similar to our deluxe models. So now we have crossover machines that lean more towards deep snow backcountry riding and cross them over into the trail system where these machines may be focused more on trail riding, even to the point of riding two up. We reinvented our, our touring snowmobiles for 2015 uh, we've, for, for a couple of reasons. One is we've had our current platform out there for quite some time. We were due for an upgrade. We've seen the potential with the new Pro Cross, Pro Climb chassis to go ahead and, and develop a great touring sled out of that, out of that platform, uh, make it very sporty, lightweight, fun feeling, you gotta have all the great features that Articat is known for in a touring snowmobile. The Pantera is a lot more than just a, a touring snowmobile or a two-up snowmobile. It's also designed to be a very sporty, 
solo cruising vehicle uh, for the guys that want to put on lots of miles, have lots of features, be able to carry lots of cargo and so forth. We chose the 1049 Yamaha uh, motor for this new touring vehicle for uh, a couple of reasons. One is it is a very fuel efficient, sporty, just overall nice engine for uh, cruising, good acceleration, it gives you a high fun factor, yet it's got a good low end torque and it's got a really nice sound to it and everything that we think a touring customer is going to appreciate. Our 4.3 gallon auxiliary fuel tank is going to give us uh, 15 total gallons of fuel capacity on the Pantera 7000 Limited. That's uh, unheard of in uh, the touring industry today and it's going to give us that 200 plus mile range that our customers are demanding. We chose a 146 inch skid frame for the Pantera uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it gives a, a nice length to span the bumps, gives you good traction. It also is enough length that it, it easily carries two people as well as the extra fuel capacity and the, all the cargo that we have on the, on the unit. The slide action rear suspension acts very well in that, in that frame and gives you uh, the kind of plush ride that our touring customers expect. We did not compromise uh, any of the handling with the 146 inch slide action uh, suspension. With the Pro Tour chassis and the Arctic Race front suspension, we have razor sharp handling and we feel that extra length doesn't inhibit us at all in uh, the ability to corner and feel comfortable when you're maneuvering around the woods. With all the information that you've seen, plus the Polaris feature at the start of this episode, you can see that 2015 is set to be a huge year for snowmobiling. There's new models, new features, and a buzz in the air that you can feel. Test Ride is sponsored by Camelplast High Performance Tracks. Revive your ride. It's strange looking, it's not overly fast, and it's a bit chilly to ride on a cold day. On the other hand, it's pretty light, it's quite high tech, and it's cheap. It's the Phaser. I said it before, and I'm gonna say it again. This is a hard to understand snowmobile, but it's also fun to ride, especially this new 144 inch XTX package. The simple fact of the matter is that a full-grown rider with any riding experience at all is not well suited for this sled. Big guys like me simply feel huge on the tiny phaser, and its 80 horsepower, 5 valve, 500 cc, twin cylinder, four stroke mill does have pretty impressive torque down low, but runs out of jam pretty fast to be exciting on a fast trail. But if we're all going to be honest here today, let's just call a spade a spade. The Phaser is not intended for riders like me, so to judge it poorly because it's not a sled I would personally buy is just not fair. Hand a Phaser to a beginner or a smaller rider and you've got a recipe for excitement. It's not intimidating in size or performance, so younger riders who are just learning find it quite easy to control. It's got electric start, EFI, and electronic push button reverse, so it's extremely easy to use and it's fairly lightweight, so it's not hard to maneuver. In terms of being beginner friendly, the Phaser only has one major drawback in my opinion. It's not an overly warm sled to ride on a cold day. Its minimalist bodywork and almost bug-like design provide little in the way of wind protection. A low windshield keeps the air off your face, but your knees and lower half may get a bit chilly. Truth is, only the most hardcore and dedicated sledders usually head out for a ride when the mercury drops real low so the Phaser's target audience probably won't be too upset by the lack of wind protection. This XTX package is kind of interesting. It includes a 144 by 14 wide track with a 1.5 paddle. It looks pretty cool, and for a Phaser, it's surprisingly capable off-trail. That Pro Mountain 144 skid does come at the cost of ride quality. But pair it with the lightweight phaser chassis and motor and you get a sled that can easily be run off trail through the backcountry with minimal effort. Somehow, this longer track and skid frame actually improves the phaser's all-round fun factor. I've always been impressed with the little 500cc twin found underneath the phaser's bodywork. 
If you think about what's going on inside that motor at 12,000 RPM, it's almost unbelievable that it can survive 15 minute pulls down Kevlar Lake at full throttle. But it can, day in and day out. Bottom end is where this little four banger really shines and it honestly lacks nothing in corner to corner performance. Sure, it runs out of steam on top end pretty quick, but it's that excellent torque that helps spin the longish 144 inch track even in the deepest snow, giving a new off-trail rider the ability to go almost anywhere they want. Ergonomically speaking, the Phaser is actually quite good. Its seat is overly hard, which does hurt its long distance comfort rating, but thanks to its 14 wide track, the tunnel's really narrow. Combine this with the thin dirt bike inspired seat, and you've got a sled that's easy to stand up and move around on, even for a smaller rider. At the end of the day, the Phasers never really had to make any excuses because, simply put, it is what it is and there really isn't anything else like it. Throw in the additional off-trail capabilities afforded by that longer track and you've got the perfect sled for a boondocker in training. With that said, I think this motor has a lot more potential than the Phaser chassis is allowing to achieve. With new chassis available to Yamaha, we wonder what the future holds for the Phaser and its little size motor with big size torque. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. Replacing wearable items is all a part of our sport, especially if you're trying to keep an older sled running. And one of the most popular and likewise most expensive pieces that you may have to replace is also potentially the most important. The track on your sled truly makes a snowmobile what it is. Without it, you're, well, you're not sledding. The track on a moderately powered sled ridden average yearly mileage should last you many years. On performance sled where both power and mileage increases, you may chip away at the track's life. A snowmobile track is truly where the power gets to the ground, and on an ultra high performance sled like this Birch Point powered 270 horsepower Procross Arctic Cat, the track sees some serious abuse. At 270 horsepower, we are nearly doubling the power sent to the track from stock. That's serious. If and when the need for a track replacement comes along, looking for the right profile is an important part of the process because different patterns and lug heights will change the performance of your sled. For the turbo sled, I chose a Camelplast hacksaw track. It's got a one inch lug profile, which is gonna be great for pulling high digits out on the lake. Plus it has a crescent lug design with recessed tips and hard cutting edges that are gonna give me some serious bite on the hard pack. But here's where the choice gets interesting. The hacksaw is a 14 inch wide track, not a 15 like the stalker. While we do not recommend running a narrower track without doing your research, on the Turbo Cats, it has been a popular choice for running higher speeds on the lakes. And with 270 horse available, we are looking for speed. Installing a track on a snowmobile is fairly straightforward, but it does have different nuances for each sled that you're gonna do it to. So if you're not comfortable, like I always say, take it to your dealership. Because truth is, it's not always a snap. The truth is, without a good mechanical understanding, you're probably gonna have a tough time. And even I got some oil in my pants. With our new hacksaw installed, you can see visibly less track outside the slide rails, and it's particularly noticeable at the rear wheels. While half an inch does not seem like a lot on either side, out on the lake, this should increase top speed by a couple of miles per hour. And seeing if that's true is just what I plan to do. So I'm gonna go get geared up, set the boost to stage four, do a few break-in runs, and then see what kind of digits this thing can pull out on the lake. The truth is, at 270 horsepower, it's very hard to feel the difference in flotation. This is not a boondocking off-trail sled, so I'm quite happy with the trade-off. The roll-on bite seems noticeably less than it did with our 125 studded track, but once up to speed, I sense a reduction in track resistance. While I do feel the top numbers are higher, it's hard to put an exact number on it. I would guess that we saw somewhere around hmm, three to five miles per hour at wide open throttle. While you may not be riding a boosted lake rocket like we are, the truth is that no matter what snowmobile you ride, Camelplast makes a wide variety of tracks to suit your riding style. And with a simple change of a track, you can totally transform the way your snowmobile performs. Arctic Cat, share our passion. 
and by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover.